So can anything be done to wake up from the dream? And the simple answer that, to that would be yes and also no. And it's all basically dependent upon you. Um, allow me to explain. Um, depending on what you are and, and what your preferences are and, and how you are and what your story is and how, how it's been kind of progressing, what you'll find is some people find very, you know, uh, a lot of comfort in, in method and technique and following a teacher. And, and, and that's the way they, you know, obviously wake up, so to speak. Um, for others, it may be obviously simpler than that. They may realize that there's nothing they can actually do. And in that actual realization, uh, like a letting go can happen. So, you know, the letting go happens and they realize what they are. On the other side, it could be that by following technique over and over and over again, a sense of actually realizing that there is really nothing and, there, and, and, and the complete nothingness of your situation can, can in a sense, wake you up. So to, to give you a, a, a concrete example, many, many years ago, I was, I was you know, with various Sufis and was a member of a school myself. And I remember meeting uh, a sheikh, a teacher, from the Naqshbandiya school, which is one of the four main schools of Sufism. And um, he gave me certain vazaifs, which are like um, spiritual prescriptions, so to speak, certain, you know, like vazaifs, things you have to do um, uh, at certain times of the day. And, and I do remember I was kind of following this prescription, following this method that he, he, he'd laid out for me. And at times there was a very real sense of not being there. So it was a case of that which was, in a sense, I was just disappearing that which was me and and then I'd, I'd, I'd come back and, and realize that life was happening but there was no sense of anybody actually doing this this life and this was all through a method or a technique I then years after that kind of got more into <clears throat> the other side of things which is kind of like there wasn't anything I could do um, kind of more of the non-dual thing um, again it was kind of like again it was like this realization that hold on I've been seeking I've been using methods and also I, I experienced very very similar states whereby it was a case of the idea of me kept kept you know disappearing it was when it kind of in a sense combined in a sense that i looked at everything i'd been doing from sufism to other approaches and then was able to find it within within myself that all idea you know the, the very last thing was was a thought and this thought had been echoed through different traditions um, and it was a thought that took life, and in a sense, it just kind of, the just thinking of that thought disappeared, and, and then all sense of seeking died with it. So, you know, does method work in order to kind of get to where you need to get to? Yes, it can. And is there anything that can be done to wake up? No, there's nothing that can be wake up. And both sides are <clears throat> completely valid, um, but it depends on you. Uh, and it's and it's your story like I said once in a previous video it's horses for courses so for some it makes perfect sense to sort of like in a sense follow a direct path or follow a path of no path for others they will want to obviously follow a teacher take prescription methods these kind of things and that will make sense to them um, what it really comes down to is you which really points to the fact that it's all you anyway so regardless of whatever approach or pointer you take it will always point back to you because all of it's a method in one way even the whole there's nothing that can be done that's still a prescription there's still a method there there's still a way home there as well so can something be done to wake up yes and it all depends completely on on you your earnestness your sincerity because let's face it, there's a lot of people out there, 99% of, of seekers, as I once said, will seek but not want to find because really they, they don't want to find. They've, they've no desire to, to see themselves. So for them to engage in different techniques and methods and learn the terminologies is great. But that's it. But that's because obviously the mind is still in control. The ego is still there and it's still saying, look, this, 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 and what's better than what we've got here. So why would we want to go over there? And look, we've learned the terminology and we've learned all that. So that's good enough, is it not? Then there are others which very kind of in a sense kind of, and it's a minority who, who echo the whole Sufi thing of, you know, the moth must fly to the flame. Yes, there is death there, but the beauty of, of what is there in that death is enough to want you to take that journey, um, realize that there's nothing of you. I, I, I used to call it hitting the wall. You know, you can do all of this, you can take all these different approaches, but sooner or later you'll hit a wall. 
where none of it will make sense. So yes, intellectually you'll understand it, and and mentally you can wax lyrical about it, but to actually taste of it, that's that's a different thing altogether. And that, again, the key ingredient is you. The key ingredient is your earnestness, your sincerity, and and almost in a sense your desire. And then finally letting go of that final desire, because the last desire is that desire to go free. So yes, okay, we can let go of all this stuff and we can let go. But then even that true letting go is something that's impersonal to you. That's the point where what you believe is real isn't. And that's what's being let go of. That's the seeker. The seeker is, is there's two. There's basically two. There's that which is really you and then there's that which is like in a sense the image and stuff. And most people wander around with this idea of two. Hence that division. So there's that which is real. It's unchanged. And that is, that needs no recognition, it is, it functions and it's happening right now, which is why liberation is happening all the time. And then there's a one that's divided, a lack in the sense of divided self that believes that there's something that can be done. Um, and that's very much controlled by the whole idea of this mind, this ego, and this very sense of what I'm wanting to do. And both methods, whether it's a, a technique, a method, or prescription, or that there is no method, look to eliminate that. And the true letting goes when the last vestiges of that go. But then that true letting go is happening from your true self, which recognizes itself. But the recognition, again, is just confirmation of what is already known. So in a sense, the whole idea of awakening and liberation becomes redundant, totally redundant in the end. It was never needed. It was just an idea. It was just a permission you were giving yourself to be something you already were. So it's like that whole learning all of this to let it go. Once it's seen, it's irrelevant. It's completely irrelevant, and it becomes impersonal personal however you want to put it because you realize there's such an expanse here and it can be communicated in as way as, as in as many different ways shapes or form but that all depends on on you recognizing your true self so in a sense you're traveling back to yourself with your seeking then you find yourself only to realize that you just had these masks these covers these faces on which 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 really didn't didn't kind of serve you and that then is 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 how it ends